Hi, I'm Roger and welcome to the shop. Uh, what I have sitting here in front of me is, I guess we'll call it a scrap pile or a junk pile find. Uh, had to go get a battery this morning from my wife's car. Uh, went out, did that, and all the little accessories you need to uh, treat the battery cables and so on. Um, it needed, it was about eight year old, eight year old battery and it had conked out. So at any rate on the way back I noticed that uh, somebody had a big bulk pile pickup sitting out front with all kinds of old crap sitting out there, mattresses and broken furniture and busted up garbage cans, etc. And one of the things I saw sitting there was this Poulin P3314 14 inch chainsaw. So I went around the block, pulled up there, uh, not too proud to do a little scrap picking once in a while. So I picked it up and I uh, wanted to see if it was froze up. It's, it's not froze up, but it is extremely hard to pull, which uh, kind of indicates to me there may be an issue with the cylinder or the piston, it may be scored and may need to be replaced. Uh, one of the things about the pool and saws, and I don't really need another chainsaw, this might be a fun little project, it's a small one. Might be good for pruning. Uh, the newer pool and chainsaws are pretty much disposable. Uh, they're very cheaply made. They're, they are made by Husqvarna, but they're very cheaply made and there's a lot of issues with them. Um, I would not buy a new one. I do have some Pool and Pro uh, equipment here and I actually have an older Pool and Pro 20 inch chainsaw, but it's an older model before they got really cheap with it. And I've got their weed eater and now their hedge trimmer and a few other things like that. Um, I don't know how old this is. It looks like it might be a predecessor to the wild thing, uh, which was a, just a mass market cheap. You could buy one. I think you could still buy one for about 80 bucks. So uh, the first thing I'm going to have to do here to find out what's wrong with this is uh, disassemble. And I don't think you need to sit here and watch me do that. So I'll come back when I get this disassembled and we'll see what we find. Okay, got her disassembled and what did I find? Well, a, a few interesting things. Uh, found water where it really wasn't supposed to be, including in the cylinder, and I can't quite figure out how it got there. Uh, it didn't rust anything. Uh, there was plenty of oil in there. The uh, piston and the cylinder are not scored. Uh, the seals on the ends, which are not the greatest design ever, and they're known for leaking. I'll uh, probably be replacing those, but uh, grab the camera here and I'll give you a little bit of a close-up of some of the stuff I found. One of the things, especially in the carburetor, was really interesting. Um, it actually looked like it came from the factory that way. So here's the piston, and uh, as you can see, it's a little darkened and everything, but there's no scoring on it, there's no pitting on it. I did uh, clean the top off a little bit. Uh, a little bit of carbon there, but not a big buildup. The cylinder itself, I, I know this isn't going to focus down in there, but uh, I don't see any problems there any place. There's, this, this part of it is actually pretty clean, so I'll be putting that back there after grab some RTV for making a new gasket. One of the things that surprised me when I was taking it apart was the amount of rust. You can see these clips here. This is uh, one of the clips to hold the top cover. And what I found was one of the heads, hopefully you can see that, it was just completely rusted out in the center. I had a heck of a time getting that out. That's the one on your right. And the one on the left there, uh, after I managed to clean the rust and scale out of it, a T25 did get in there and bite that. That one on the right there was just no way. Here's what I found in the carburetor I thought was interesting when I went to take it off. Uh, you see right here where my thumb is, hopefully that'll focus. That was actually folded over. Um, that had to have been a heck of an air leak. I'm surprised this didn't run too lean. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sure I can get that piece or maybe just straighten it out. And I'll probably go through this carburetor anyway because I'm sure that the gas in this is mighty old. Uh, there's the air filter. It wasn't all that dirty really considering the way the rest of this was. Over here's the uh, the chain side cover, and I mean it was just loaded with stuff. I had stuff falling all over when I was taking the bar and chain off. It's 
surprisingly, the chain is not dull. It's actually pretty sharp. Uh, clutch and is okay. I've, I'll probably put a new sprocket on here since I've got it apart. I'm going to focus on that. It's uh, worn a little bit. Not all that bad, but since I have it apart, I'll be replacing it. Uh, those of you that do have a pool and chainsaw or a Husqvarna, this is a handy little tool here for taking the uh, clutch drum on and off. Uh, they're only about 14 bucks. Slips right over the clutch and you put an impact on there. You don't need to mess around with a, a stop or anything. Just leads, pull the spark plug wire off, of course. Then uh, put this in there, put an impact on it. And of course, it's always left-hand thread, so you want to shoot it to the right to break it loose. So if you've got an impact on there, you've got the spark plug in it yet, you don't need to mess around with a cylinder stop or trying to shove rope down the cylinder or any of that kind of stuff. But at any rate, I've got it all tore apart. I'm going to need to get a few parts, and then I'm going to be putting it back together. So the question is, that I've got this all tore apart, and I see what's wrong. It doesn't need anything major. Uh, if it would have needed a uh, cylinder and piston, I probably would have just pitched it. Uh, is it worth it? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, I've got maybe an hour and a half in this now. Uh, with about 45 minutes of that fooling around with them rusted screws and trying to figure out how in the world water got in some of the places it was. So, uh, I'm going to mess with this a little more. Uh, not costing me anything. Um, I don't imagine those seals cost very much. I'll uh, get on Amazon here later and find those and get a little carburetor kit for this. You know, so if I get 20, 30 bucks in it and it works, got me another chainsaw. But, uh, We'll be back and uh, after I get some new parts and pieces for this and get it put back together and see if we can't get this thing running. Okay, so here we are a week later and I've got some parts for this chainsaw. I'll uh, kind of go through what I got. And another uh, sprocket drum and clutch sprocket drum or whatever you want to call it. Obviously you need a little bit of RTV for the bottom of the crankcase. That uh, little crush tube that for the carburetor, probably didn't have to buy one, but it was only like a buck and a half. Got one of those. Um, something I wasn't looking close at when I ordered cover screws, I thought it was three dollars for three of them. I'm right here. No, they're three dollars a piece. So I have nine dollars I hadn't, uh, yeah, that was a little steep for that. Then I've got a carburetor kind of rebuild repair kit here. I'll show you what all was involved with in a minute. One of the things it comes with, the carburetor, is this nifty little adjusting tool. So you can adjust to make sure in the carburetor. The problem is it doesn't really fit real well. Of course, you don't have to worry about falling off. But I can imagine what that's going to be like, trying to get that in there and do any kind of adjusting while the engine's running. And they're both like that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes when I get to it. Let me uh, zoom in here. I'll show you what all comes in this little kit. Okay, right here's this little kit. And I think it was about $22 or something like that. It was on Amazon. It was made by Hayskill or something like that. Uh, so you get two air filters. You get two primer bulbs. So you have a spare of each. You get a uh, fuel pickup filter, gaskets, uh, the oil tank cap, a gas tank cap. I didn't really need those, but it came with it. Uh, of course, that tool I had mentioned, the carburetor. Then you get some uh, fuel and primer lines. So, I guess it's time to do some assembly. Yeah, I'm not going to bore you with the entire assembly procedure here. I'm just going to give you a couple of tips. Um, when you get your cylinder, first of all, clean everything and get it impeccably clean, blown out, and dry. Because uh, your RTV won't stick worth a damn if you don't have it that way. There's a couple spacers in here. Um, there's one of them. You can't put them in the wrong side. They'll only go in one way. Uh, another little tip, I guess, is if you've never done this, don't try to do it without a diagram, I've, a parts diagram. I've done a lot of these, so I have no problem taking them apart and putting them back together. Uh, what did I use to clean this up? I actually used brake clean, and that's what I used, and it took carbon right off that piston. Cleaned up real good. Uh, there's no uh, scoring on it or anything. It looks in good shape. You notice on the... Uh, one side of the piston, there's two little indentations. Those have to go towards your intake port. 
And you'll also notice above that, and I don't know if the camera will show that, but right here is a pin. That's where your ring needs to meet. And there's two little bevels on the ring. The lower part of that, the long part of the ring, needs to be down towards the piston. Now, I don't put it in backwards. Uh, and, of course, you're going to want to lubricate this before you put it in, but you don't want to get oil and stuff on your gasket surfaces either. And if something else I did, uh, you might see how shiny this is. It wasn't exactly flat. So I took a uh, piece of 220 wet dry paper with a little bit of oil on it, laid it flat on my table saw cast iron top, which I know is perfectly flat, and went back and forth until everything was uniform. I did it on both the cylinder and on the cap that goes on the bottom. So before I put this back together and slip this in, you want to have some lubrication on this so you don't have a dry start. You can use uh, two-cycle oil. That works just fine. That's that stuff you mix with the gas. Just put a good coating on it. I like to use, yeah, I know there's some engine guys who are going to not like this, but I've always had good luck with it. Chain and cable lube. This is just for the initial startup. You're not going to run on it. This stuff sticks to almost anything, and it doesn't run off, so that's why I like to use it. See there, it's not dripping all over, it just stays right on the piston. Give the crank a little shot there. And we'll get this turned around with the, I've got the uh, intake towards me. And I'm careful not to get anything on my gasket surfaces. And I'll go just that far, and I'll stop, because I do put a little bit of RTV on these outside edges here, because these seals are notorious for failing. And another little uh, shop tip I'll point out here, I've done quite a few of these, so the base of the saw actually holds the crankcase together. So after you get the, this cap back on here like this, you're going to have to hold this whole thing together get it flipped up around and get it mounted into the back into the saw base then put your bolts up through the bottom of the saw base and that's what holds it together something that I do and I'm going to do it here of course is I take two of the bolts I make some spacers these are just uh, it's a 5 6 I'll get it out where you can see it it's a 5 16 nut and a quarter inch rod coupling that's been drilled out if I would have had the right size metric bolts that short I would have just used that but after I get my RTV on and get everything set I'll put one of these in each corner, and I'll let it sit there overnight. Then tomorrow, when I get ready to put it back into the saw, I will actually put a big rubber band around it, a real heavy one, before I take these bolts out. I'll then set it in place, put the bolts in, get them started good, just about tight, cut the rubber band and pull it out. That way you don't lose your alignment, you don't lose your seal. Uh, just, just a little shop tip for you. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every step of assembling this. You don't need to watch me squirt our TV on a surface. I mean, it's pretty basic and simple. If you don't know how to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing this. At least that's my opinion. So, like I said, some of you uh, other engine guys may not agree with the way I've been doing this, but it's the way I do it. Never had any problems. Always had good success. And there's a little tip for you. So I'll get some of this put back together. Okay, there we have it. Got the crank uh, piston back in. I've got the intake ports facing the camera right now. Turns over real well. Don't forget to put your little spring back on that uh, operates the oil pump. I got the two bolts in the corners, so I'll leave this set overnight. Got it down good and tight. Got just a little bit of squeeze out, which I've wiped off. Well, now I have. Okay, so a little, another little tip. Okay, you just open up this brand new tube of RTV. What do you do with it? Keep it from drying out. Electrician. Uh, some people call them wire nuts, scotch locks. This is a Buchanan, whatever you want to call it. Uh, put it on the tip. Screw it on until it gets tight. And give the tube a little squeeze to fill that little void up in there with silicone. It will not dry out. The next time you want to use it, just take the uh, wire nut off the end and there will be a little bit of dried up stuff at the tip. Just throw that away and Go ahead and use your tube. That way you don't waste it. Of course, my problem is I'll put this somewhere and forget where I put it. Then when I need some, I'll just go buy some more anyway. But anyway, I'll give it a shot at trying to save it. Okay, we'll come back uh, to putting this back together after everything dries and sets up. Well, while the uh, RTV was setting up, I put the muffler back on it and the carburetor back on it. And 
just held on temporary with nuts and let that set up and I thought well while I'm at it I'll replace a few lines and as I did the first one I thought well if you've never done this before you're probably wondering how in the world you get that little skinny line through that tight hole uh, on the old filter it's the old line I pulled out and it, the bottom of it has gotten pretty soft from being soaked in the gas for all them years and I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not but there's two cracks in it so that need to replace it so got the new filter uh, fuel line on there and a little uh, tip when you do put this on and I'll show you how the line goes when I do the, the primary return line uh, leave enough so that this filter when you drop it back in the tank can flop around anywhere in there regardless of which way you're holding the saw otherwise you lose your gas pickup okay now the this is uh, this bigger line here is the primary return line which comes off of the primer bulb this is the old one here uh, there's a long and you know, a short tube on there short tube goes to the top that's the one that goes to the carburetor the uh, long barb on the bottom goes to what they call a return tube and inside the tank and I'll show you how this works in a second is this little tiny I don't even know if you're going to be able to see it here this little tiny hose barb ah. Now you, it's a little tiny hose barb, anyway. And that goes on the end of the hose, then you pull the hose back up, and that's the return line for the primer. So to get this line in this hole, uh, your main gas line, you get this around so you can see it. The main pickup gas line is the upper one up here. Now there's a lower one down over here, that's your primer return line. And that's the one I'm going to be tackling here, and that's the larger diameter of the two hoses if you got the real cheap made in China hay scale kit. So what you need to do is cut a very long taper on the hose. The best thing to do is go get your wife's good scissors. You need a pretty long taper on it too because you got to have enough in there hanging in there so that you can reach in and grab it with either forceps or needle nose or something like that. At the very tip, I actually cut a point on it. Makes it a little bit easier to get started there and grab. And you may remember I, I was putting this thing together using a chain lube. No, I'm not sponsored by Johnson's or anything. It's just handy stuff. Give that a little squirt on there. Get a little bit layer on there. It makes it, uh, it'll slip a lot easier. A little lubrication goes a long way in a lot of things. You just get that taper shoved in there as far as you can. And the fun part is reaching in there and grabbing that. Once you do, just start pulling. And if you got that lube on there, like this, it'll pull right up. If you're trying to pull it up dry, you'll have a hell of a time. So once you get it to there, so I can pull a little more out to make life easier here. Cut your end back off flush. A little bit of that uh, lube, which is able to do with my hose barb. There it is. Don't lose that. Put the hose barb on the end. Then you'll want to pull this line back up until this hose barb meets the top of the gas tank and then you leave it there. And I always use my handy dandy Harbor Freight flashlight. Look, and it's right where it's supposed to be. So that's your primary return line. And that'll come over here to your primer bulb. And I have a new one here somewhere. This primer bulb um, looks like this here, and you got a long one and a short one, as I mentioned before. The short go one goes to the carburetor, and it's the one that goes up when you snap it in. And you want to uh, route your gas line over so that it's not going to interfere with anything, but you don't want it too long, or you'll never get it stuffed in there. So right about there. Like I said that's the return line. 
that goes on to the bottom barb. And with a little bit of that chain lube I got on my fingers, it makes it real easy. And I'll get a little bit on that top one. The top one here is the one that goes actually to the carburetor. If you look at the, uh, the old one here, that little short line, that goes to the carburetor. And this is uh, way too much line, but I'm just going to stick it on. I'll cut it to length when I get everything back in here. And like I said, with that chain lube on there, it goes right in, which is my watch. Bring this back over to where it goes. There's a little slot there so you can slide the lines through it. Get it right side up. There's a little keyway there. It just snaps in. And there it is. Nothing to it. Then uh, you just drop your gas line down inside. And if you want to use the new cap, there was nothing wrong with the old cap other than it didn't have one of these. Well, I guess it did have one of these fancy keepers, but it must have broke off. So we'll even put the new cap in there. So we're good to go there. Another little shop tip, if you're, uh, once you take a saw apart this far, make sure you empty the oil tank, because I didn't. And when I flipped it over to uh, start messing with these fuel lines, since I don't have the oil pump in there, all the oil ran out all over the table. So I had a quite a mess. So another little shop tip. Okay, now I just got to uh, wait for some our TV to set up. Okay, it was screwed up a little bit. I thought I actually had the camera on. Well, I did have the camera on, but I had thought I hit record, and I guess I didn't. But anyway, I got the motor back in there. Got the rubber band cut off, and I guess I was talking to myself through the whole thing. Got my uh, gas lines kind of routed around where they need to be. I'm not going to hook them up quite yet. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is put the oil pump back on. If the uh, probably put the clutch and sprocket back on this side, get that side wrapped up, and we'll flip around over here, put the flywheel back on, and uh, start reassembling some of these other little parts and pieces. And we'll get ready to get this thing running here. I hope I hope it'll be today. I don't know the skies start looking. I don't know. It's like we're gonna get some rain. Oil pump here just uh, it's got a little rod on it. It slips down inside a hole here and then flips over the shaft that just goes to the place. Two little screws. There's a gear on it that engages with that little spring that was on the crankshaft. From here, uh, regulation washer. And we'll get a new uh, crank sprocket here. clutch. Of course this is left hand thread so it's uh, turn it to the left to tighten it up. And I need my impact. Yes, this is overkill. If you set it on reverse, on reverse, there we go. This little tool here, as I mentioned earlier in the video, just fits in two little holes that are made for it. Well, I'm going to need to put the spark plug in it to get some compression going here. And that's tight. That's all there is to it. And then I know there's another little washer. There it is. That goes on the clutch. And the new sprocket over the top of that. And then there's an E-ring. Which I'm hoping I won't send flying across the room here. Just fits into a little slot. And not the right tool for it, but we're going to try it. Almost. Well, come on. There we go. So there is to that. And on the other side, flywheel. There's a uh, key that's. There's no separate key on the flywheel on this. It's actually molded right into the flywheel. Damn flies.
Just have to find that spot and get it lined up. And now I need a socket for this, which happens to be 13 millimeter. That fits better. It's probably a different size, too. Oh. And that's it. Now it's just a matter of getting the rest of the wiring and everything assembled in here. I'm not going to bore you with that, but uh, I'll get the rest of this put back together and maybe it will have time today to see if this thing starts. Okay, those of you that work on these engines and know all about this, you saw me do it make a boo-boo because I left the part out. That's this washer that goes on top of the clutch sprocket. And I noticed that after I uh, started looking in my parts tray and what parts I had left. And realized that I had left that out. So there we are. So that's on there. The reason I was looking in my parts tray is because there are some screws like this in there. And I know they didn't come off this saw. So I use these little magnetic, uh, well, this one happens to be a blue point, which is made by Snap On, but you can get them at Harbor Freight too. I got several of these around. And when you're working on a project, it's great to keep all your hardware in. And if it happens to be ferrous metal, like iron or steel, well, the gasket it wasn't, obviously, but the stuff doesn't fall out of there. And a uh, real handy little item there. If you get the Harbor Freight ones, they're like two bucks. So anyway, I'll uh, get back to putting the rest of this together. I guess one other thing I'll mention, since I got the camera back on, that's how you spill sockets. Right here, where the spark plug wire and the... Uh, I get for lack of a better re uh, the switch, your on off switch. The wiring for it runs down in here off the magneto or the pickup coil. There's a little spring clip here. Make sure you don't leave that out because if you do, your wires will fall into the flywheel when the engine's running and then pretty soon the engine won't be running anymore. There's a couple little uh, bosses right into the cylinder right there where this fits. So don't leave that piece out. I've worked on these before where that's been gone or somebody left it out. And most of the time the uh, spark plug wire gets worn through from the flywheel rubbing on it. And you can't replace just the spark plug wire. You gotta replace the whole coil. So little hint there. Well, here it is. Cleaned up pretty good. All reassembled. Exception is I did not put the chain back on it. Um, I won't do that till after I get it running. So my intent was to uh, start it up, fire it up, and uh, see how everything worked. Problem is, uh, I don't have any gas. And it's raining, and I don't want to go get gas. And a buddy of mine called and said, what are you doing, drinking beer? I said, well, I am now. So I guess that part of it will wait till tomorrow. So until I get the gas uh, for this tomorrow, and it's not raining, and I can... Uh, I need to fill up the cans for the lawnmowers anyway, and the tractors and that, so I'll make it a worthwhile trip. So people are probably wondering, how much should I spend on this thing? Well, the saw itself cost me nothing off a junk pile. Uh, parts, if I would have paid a little bit more attention to those screws, and thinking they were $3 for three, not $3 a piece, I'd be $6 richer. At any rate, I've got about $45 in this. Plus, a uh, can of brake clean, a little bit of uh, purple power, I had to clean everything up, everything was full of junk. And uh, didn't really have to buy any tools, uh, you're wondering if there's any kind of special tools, uh, T25 Torx, T30 Torx, um, these came in handy for the fuel line, uh, long reach, bent nose, the end of the nose, these happen to be made by Matco. Uh, you may have noticed that little ratchet I was using, little swivel head, right here. You can, yeah, it's handy as hell. Or you could run it the other way. And you could take the uh, little quarter inch drive insert out. And you can stick an apex driver in it. I mean, it's handy as hell. It's made by Titan. Um, I don't remember what I paid for it. Actually, I don't remember where I got it. When I was working as an electrician, I carried this in my pocket all the time. I use it in the trade for different things. So anyway, uh, yeah, I, all together I suppose I got 50 bucks in this thing. Solvents and oils and all that. Uh, 
We'll find out how it works tomorrow. Right now, I'm going to drink beer. Well, as you can see, it works. Didn't take a whole lot of adjustment uh, from the way it was sent on that carburetor. I was kind of surprised. I thought it'd have to be filling with it a little more. Uh, had a little trouble getting it started at first there, probably because of the assembly oil in it. Uh, and I, then I probably flooded it, so I had to get a start with wide open throttle. But once I did that and made a couple of adjustments, uh, it ran fine. And as you can see, it cuts fine. Uh, I did mess with the idle a little bit after I move the camera you say it didn't idle real well but it does now so uh, yeah okay for a junk pile saw this was an uh, interesting project uh, whether it was worth it or not I don't know it was kind of fun and I've got a spare chainsaw and I could have used that here about two weeks ago when uh, that Donatio storm came through here and knocked trees down and everything I was using my other one hence the long delay between the time I uh, put this all together and was able to actually check it out. It's been almost three weeks. But, you know, things get in the way and stuff happens. Uh, so, anyhow, not a bad thing. I think I got, oh, 50 bucks or so, a little more involved in this. Uh, would have been less if I hadn't paid $3 a piece for these stupid cover screws. But, anyway, if you like this video, I appreciate getting a thumbs up. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. And next to that subscribe button is a little bell. If you click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. 
Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop with my little pool and chainsaw, and we'll see you on the next one.